Greetings everybody and today we're going to be evaluating this infinite series that's the sum running from n equals 0 to an infinity of 2n choose n times 1 over 5 to the n. So taking a look at this for the first time it might look like a bit of a funny sum to evaluate because in particular we have this 2n choose n in here um, and yeah, if you want to be using real methods for this you'll probably have to expand this out but then you'll have um, the factorials flying around everywhere or you'll probably have to come up with some clever identities to use or something like that, I'm not too sure. But why restrict ourselves to the real line when we can go complex with this? And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, in the previous video, we derived this integral representation for the binomial coefficients. So if we have n choose k, that's 1 over 2 pi i contour integral of 1 plus z raised to the top number over z raised to the bottom number and then we have to remember a plus one in here, dz. And that's exactly where we're going to start with this. By the way, if you haven't checked that video out, you should probably do so. I'll put a link up here or in the description for that. So let's do a bit of a replacement on this sum. So now it's equal to the sum running from n equals zero to infinity of one over two pi i. Now we have the contour integral over c of 1 plus z raised to the top number, which is 2n, divided by z raised to the bottom number, which is n, and then plus 1. And we also have a dz. And let's not forget about 1 over 5 to the n. OK, so that's just plugging in um, this formula here, pretty much. Now what we're going to do, we're going to start manipulating things a little bit. Let's start, first of all, by dragging this 1 over 2 pi i onto the outside and we're actually going to drag this 1 over 5 to the n inside of this integral because it doesn't depend on z. So now we have 1 over 2 pi i contour integral, not the contour integral, yeah? we have the sum first running from n equals 0 to infinity of the contour integral over c of 1 plus z. Now I'm going to write this as 1 plus z but the whole thing squared, and then raised to the nth power. I'm going to rewrite z to the n plus 1 as being z to the n, and then times probably, yeah, z out here that I'm going to put. We also have a 5 to the n that we're bringing inside, so I'll maybe put it right over here next to the z, so 5 to the n, z to the n, and then we still have a dz, which I'll just place up here. Okay, now why do I do this? It's because I want to kind of factor out the power of n. Um, so let's just do this on this line over here instead of having to write everything out again. So 5 to the n, z to the n, um, well, we can factor out these n powers and we'll get a 5z on the denominator here. And now this whole entire thing raised to the nth power. Okay, so this is what we have now. The next thing to do is we want to interchange the summation and the integration. Now, in general, you can't quite do this, um, but in this case, it turns out we can if we choose our contour properly. Um, it turns out if you block out this integral, if you just ignore that, that's the sum of some junk or something raised to the nth power. And that's exactly the geometric series. Now, it turns out that the geometric series, it nicely uniformly converges if you're in a certain um, radius of convergence. And the nice thing is if you're uniformly convergence, um, then you can exchange the summation and integration. I think that's a theorem from real analysis or even complex analysis you can prove um, but yeah, we can do this interchange if we're careful about where this is in the radius of convergence. So what's the radius of convergence for a geometric series? We want the inside of um, this nth power to be less than or equal to 1, or in particular, its absolute value. Um, now, just to be a bit more precise than that, we want the absolute value of 1 plus a z squared over 5z, so the inside of that nth power. Um, I think it's not enough for this to be less than 1. I think this only ensures convergence, but not uniform convergence. I'm pretty sure someone will probably have to correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure you'll have to have 
less than or equal to some number a and this be less than one for this to be uniformly convergence um, something like that but yeah if we choose our contour c in such a way such that all the z's on our contour satisfy this relation then everything is nice and uniformly convergent and then we can switch the summation and contour integration um, so what contour should we choose that is the next question well let's just maybe do a guess there's well infinitely many contours you can use but just to keep things simple let's just say that our contour c is um the set i guess or c is equal to the set of all z um such that the magnitude of z is equal to one or in other words our contour is just the, the unit circle now why is the unit circle nice if you just take a look at this uh, expression here what we can do is we can rewrite it as follows we can kind of bring the absolute values inside everywhere and you'll get one plus a z absolute value but squared divided by five absolute value of z now know this we can use the triangle inequality on the top to say this is less than or equal to one plus the absolute value of z but the whole thing squared over five absolute value of z but now notice if we're on the unit circle then the absolute value of z is always one so this is equal to what well, one plus one is two but two squared is four so we have a four over five because absolute value of z down here is also one and the nice thing is four over five is less than one so in fact if we choose the unit circle then everything is nice and uniformly convergent um, so we have to choose this well we don't have to but this is one of the contours we can choose so with that out of the way we can exchange summation and integration so now this becomes one over two pi i now we have the contour integral over c of the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 plus z with the whole thing squared divided by 5z and this whole thing raised to the nth power dz over z. Okay, so now we can kind of think about this whole entire sum as being one thing. Notice it's okay to leave out the z because it's independent of the index which is n. Um, so let's just focus on this sum. We know this converges, but what does it converge to? Well, I think the formula goes something like this. So we have the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of r to the n. Well, this is just 1 over 1 minus r. So that's the geometric series that we're going to use right on this equal sign in here. So let's do that. So now we have 1 over 2 pi i contour integral over c of 1 over 1 minus the inside of this nth power which is 1 plus a z but the whole thing squared over 5z and then we also have a dz over z like so Okay, so now what's the next thing we can do? Notice we have a bunch of fractions inside of fractions. So what I'll do now is I'll distribute the z into everything. And I'll also, to get rid of this 5 down here, I'm going to multiply the top and the denominator by 5. So let's see what this gives us. First of all, we're going to have 5 over 2 pi i. And then we have the contour integral over c of, we have 1 over... If we multiply z into here, we're going to get a z, but we're also multiplying by 5 into the denominator. So we're going to get 5z minus, and this whole entire denominator down here cancels out. So that's 1 plus a z, but the whole thing squared dz. All right. So we've gone, uh, we've come quite far. All that's left for us to do is to evaluate this contour integral. And notice this denominator is just a quadratic, and hopefully we all know how to evaluate the contour integrals of reciprocals of quadratic. It's pretty quite straightforward. Um, we just have to find where the poles are. So this is the contour integral over C of 1 over. Let's just rewrite this a little bit. If we expand out this bracket, we're going to get... Um, well, because of this negative over here, we have minus 1, minus 2z, minus z squared. Um, so there's a minus 1. 
I also said minus 2z, but with this plus 5z, that's going to be a 3z. And I also said minus z squared. So let's put that in here. So dz. Okay. So now we're left with this reciprocal of a quadratic. So it's best for us to find where the poles are. So how do we find the poles of this function? Well, we'll just solve where the denominator is equal to zero. So we're going to solve now 3z minus z squared minus one is equal to zero. This is just a quadratic. Let's use the quadratic formula. So we have z is equal to minus b, which is minus three, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is nine, minus 4a, which is minus 1, and c, which is also minus 1. And this is all divided by 2a, which is 2 times minus 1. So what exactly is this? This is going to be um, minus 3 plus or minus the square root. We have three negatives in here, so that becomes 9 minus 4, which is 5 divided by minus two, but we can rewrite this as three plus or minus the square root of five divided by two, just multiplying top and bottom by negative. Okay, so we have two poles. Now the question is now, um, we have some contour integral, which is this circle, which one do we use or do we use both of them? Um, well, this is a unit circle. Let's put a picture somewhere over here, I guess. So we have our unit circle over here, a radius one. Now, what do we have? We have three minus square root of five or plus square root of five. Now, square root of five is something like 2.2, I think somewhere around there. So if you take the negative range, you're going to get three minus 2.2, which is a bit less than one. And if you divide by two, that's like a bit less than 0 0.5. So maybe over here, that's this pole over here. This is three minus root five over two. Now, if you take the positive branch, well, three plus 2.2, that's like 5.5. If you divide by two, you're going to be well, greater than two. So this pole over here, this is three plus square root of five over two. And as you can see, this pole is not enclosed by the contour we are considering. So we're not gonna care about this pole. We're only gonna calculate the residue at this pole. So this contour integral, what does it evaluates to, it evaluates to, well, we have five over two pi i already. This contour integral, it's gonna become two pi i times the residue at this pole. But since we have a division by two pi i, um, well, those just cancel and we get five residue at z equals three minus root five over two of your function. So that's um, one over three z minus z squared minus one. Okay, now this is just a simple pole. It's pretty obvious because this is a quadratic, so it splits up into linear factors over here. So let's use the formula for residues at simple poles, and that's five. We also have the limit as z approaches the pole, which is three minus root five divided by two of, we have z minus the pole, which is three minus root five over two times the function, but that's the same thing as dividing by the quadratic, which is 3z minus z squared minus one. Okay, now notice three minus root five over two, that's a root of this quadratic, which means if we plug it in, we're gonna get a zero. And if you plug this pole into z minus, uh, three minus root five over two, you're also gonna get zero. So let's use some L'Hopital's rule. So this gives us a five differentiating the top one, we still have this limit as z approaches three minus root five over two. Differentiating the top, that's just one. Differentiating the bottom, we get three minus two z. So three minus two z. And yeah, the final thing to do since nothing blows up if we plug in this pole, we can just sub it in directly. So in the end, kind of fit it down here. I think I just can actually, which is quite nice. In the end, we get five, one over three minus two times z, but that happens to be three minus root five over two. And you'll notice the twos are gonna cancel, the threes are gonna cancel, we have a double negative here, so we're left with a division by root five. So this is five over the square root of five. Now it simplifies down to just square roots of five. So that is the final result for today's sum.
that's a bit weird to say. Usually I say that's the final result for today's integral or something like that. But no, we're doing a sum today. Um, something different on my channel. So yeah, a bit of an interesting one. Um, haven't really seen this before, uh, which is yeah why I'm presenting this, I guess. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, and yeah, make sure to subscribe for more complex analysis content. I'll probably be posting some more throughout the summer or winter if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And until the next one, um, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.